Good morning. We are here today with NC Serves and uh, Brandon Wilson with Veteran Services of the Carolinas and Ms. Jessica Rice, who hosts our, our regular show of NC Serves. And we're here to talk about what services are available during this crisis situation that we're in. And um, Brandon, I'll start with you. First of all, tell tell people what you do and um, what you do uh, with NC Serves and uh, and uh, Veteran Services of Carolinas. And uh, then we'll go to Jessica. So yeah, thanks, Davine. And uh, Veteran Services of the Carolinas is uh, a division under ABCCM. So we are a ministry under uh, Asheville Buncombe uh, Community Christian Ministry. And we offer services for veterans and their family members, uh, not only at a, a local level and a regional level, but now across the state of North Carolina, we're in 49 counties. There yeah, are programs that we offer. We offer four main programs for our veterans and family members. Um, one of those being SSBF, which is a rapid rehousing, um, housing first model program that we get a grant from the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, that program we run here in Western North Carolina. We also run three independent grants of, of HVRP, which is a Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program, which is a pr employment program designed to put veterans back to work, uh, targeting homeless veterans or veterans at risk of becoming homeless and putting them back into a work into the workforce, particularly in a career field. Uh, another program that we offer is the grant we get from the Department of Health and Human Services called HOPE. Uh, that grant is uh, primarily intensive outreach services. Uh, we do offer that in Buncombe, Henderson, and Haywood County. We utilize our peer support specialist to do intensive outreach uh, uh, to the homeless community and to veterans at most risk uh, who are suffering from uh, co-occurring complex uh, mental health substance use uh, situations. Um, and our last uh, program that I'll talk about that Jessica could probably elaborate a little bit more on is our NC Serves program, which is the coordination of all these activities that we have, not only just with Veteran Services of the Carolinas, but also with all of our other partners and community providers that we work with day in, day out, even during this COVID crisis, uh, and coordinates all those efforts across 21 different human service needs. And so Jessica can uh, elaborate a little bit more on that here in a minute. Uh, so that's a little bit about Veteran Services of the Carolinas, uh, and we are up, we are operational, and we are continuing to help our community during this time. So how did Veteran Services of the Carolinas get started, and how did you get involved? So Veteran Services of the Carolinas actually has been around uh, probably since around 2008 is when it started, when uh, uh, ABCCM received the first SSBF grant, which is our housing grant that we've got. And it went along with an old grant that we had uh, called VWIP through the Department of Labor, and that's since it's turned into HVRP. So it's actually started in 2008. Uh, since then, we have scaled that uh, considerably in the last 24 months. We have we have went from just the one or two little programs to the four major programs with a lot of a lot of staff. Uh, fortunately for me, I'm a local to the area. Uh, spent some time in the Marine Corps. Uh, took a job in Raleigh for a while, working with Veterans Affairs at the state level come home to be a better father and husband and uh our executive director scott rogers reached out and said hey you want to come work for me and it really went along with uh, my faith uh, and my uh, service above self uh, mentality that i've had uh, from a good up upbringing so that's sort of uh, how we got here okay and jessica you're with um you're our host for um uh, nt serves radio but tell us uh tell the listeners and viewers um a little bit of what you're doing, and especially during this time of crisis. Definitely. So uh, my name is Jessica Rice. I am the uh, Western Regional Coordinator for Veteran Services of the Carolinas. A big part of that is our NC Serve Coordination Center. Uh, covers 16 counties in Western North Carolina and works with about 90 providers in the community to send and receive referrals for individuals, veterans, family members, and caregivers to help them get connected to resources they need. Uh, we're open and operational during this COVID time. Um, we have individual answer on the phone, emails and faxes. Everything's operational here. Uh, we want to be here for what our veterans and their families whenever they're facing crisis or they have questions about uh, situations that they're in. We want people to be able to talk to them uh, in real time. Uh, so that coordination center is open from 
30 to five Monday through Friday, ready to take on those referrals. Uh, working with community partners, finding out which ones are open, which ones are working from home, um, and supporting them in those roles if they need help getting documentation from veterans or if they need help setting up Zoom calls or technology needs. Um, we want to be here to help the veterans with that as well. Um, so I started with Veteran Services of the Carolinas when the NC Serves grant came live in August of 2017. That's how long that coordination center has been up and running. Um, I'm a, a spouse of an um, active duty Marine currently. Um, so this culture is something that I really appreciate and something I look forward to serving. So I think I understand that your husband is deployed now, is he not? He is. Yep. He's been deployed since January. It's kind of funny, uh, the January to May deployment um, and due to COVID, that's definitely been pushed back. We don't quite have a date yet, but mm -hmm. just one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell the listeners and viewers how things have been for uh, Veteran Services of the Carolinas and NC Serves uh, as this uh, crisis situation and the awareness of it has developed. What have y'all been having? What have y'all been coordinating about? And and give us some stories about what's happening out there in the veterans world. Right. Doing a lot of outreach, um, a lot of support for our food ministries or any of the individuals that serve hot meals. Uh, mm -hmm. We realize that that's a really big need at this time. Um, also helping with individuals that need food boxes or need food to go pantry uh, shelf stable items, helping them get those. Um, food has always been something that we've assisted veterans and families with, but it's really, we've really seen an increase in that recently. Um, and we, we definitely suspect it's due to COVID. Um, the call center also takes calls for those housing and employment needs that veterans may have. Um, we see a lot of, you know, individuals losing their job and looking for work or just help navigating that system. Um, and we're also seeing housing being an issue with, you know, rent being due and employment being an issue and income just in general. So all those things kind of fall line in line with this COVID and the unknown that in individuals are facing. Um, but we're here to kind of step in and help guide through those with some of our support programs that we have in addition to the NC Service Coordination Center. Yes, and prior to going uh, on camera, Brandon was telling me about uh, the funds and the grants and the assistance available. Do you want to uh, address that now, Brandon, uh, about all of the uh, serve, all of the uh, support that's going to be available or is available for people who are finding themselves in a crunch situation. Yeah, so our a lot of our grants are that are federally funded. We all know the government is really leaning in on this to support our communities during this time. And uh, both our housing grant, uh, employment grant, uh, are actually given and putting out more uh, availability to some of these funds and loosened up some of the standards that we've got. So uh, that being said, we, we've been able to really help a lot of individuals who have been homeless to get them into some quarantine efforts uh, uh, through being able to pay extended stays in hotels where we've been usually limited on the number of days we can put a veteran into a hotel that's been literally homeless or uh, just become homeless. That 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 has been lifted by our, our grant. And so now we're able to put several veterans, uh, as many as we need to, in a hotel during this time for an extended period uh, until this thing comes to a close, during which our case managers are working remote. Uh, they are doing virtual assessments and we're all able to continue to assist them in a more sustainable effort. We know that uh, putting somebody in a hotel is not a long-term uh, solution to a problem that may exist with them. However, it does get them off the streets. Uh, the good news is we have been working with our county uh, emergency preparedness teams, the COVID teams, uh, to assure the safety of all involved, to include not only our staff, uh, the veterans that we're serving, but also these hotels that have opened their doors up for some of the, uh, these situations that have come up. So really grateful that the community is uh, coming together and willing to work with us, willing to work with some of these additional funds that we've got. Uh, I, you know, just a quick story real fast. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, a call from a law enforcement agent, uh, a local county office that called and said, hey, we, we've got calls from this veteran that's, that's in the woods down by the creek. He's got two small children. Uh, it's going to be storming tonight. We don't know what's going on. We're going to go out there. Is there anything you can do to help? So the sheriff's deputies got out there. They called. They called our, our HOPE team, uh, which was uh, 
comprised of some peer support specialists and and we coordinated efforts so we got them in a hotel and they've been in a hotel now for three weeks we've gotten them uh food from local food pantries not only just in buncombe county but in other counties as well that supported that means and now we have got them enrolled in in three of our four major programs to get this veteran back on track and it just it's unfortunate the situation come to where he was homeless on the creek during a COVID pandemic with no money. And two children. With children. Uh, and so those are the kind of stories that we like to hear. Those are the kind of stories that makes the work that we do uh, very rewarding. But uh, the fact that we still have individuals that's, that's in those situations, particularly during this time of uncertainty, uh, can quickly escalate uh, and be a slippery slope into some other things happening. So we were real grateful that the sheriff's department reached out. We were real grateful that my peer support specialist team was able to go out there at night, work on a Saturday to get them squared away and use some of these additional funds and, and leniency we have on our grants to get them in a hotel for a period of time. So that's just a quick story about that. Thank you very much. It's good. That's that's being there when people need it. So that's, and I'm and 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 I'm uh, encouraged to hear that the uh, sheriff's department is uh, treating situations like that with compassion. Yeah, yeah, yeah real fortunate. Yeah. Uh, employment. That's that's the big one right now is with with employment, and we've seen we have seen th that Asheville has been hit. Uh, just recently was ranked the top 10 hardest hit cities in the United States as far as unemployment and unemployment insurance uh, claims being made. Um, the good news is for, for veterans is is one of our programs is, is we get is from the Department of Labor. And so we're able to really assist veterans get back into the workforce when uh, we are clear of this. Um, and even during this time, we've helped several veterans recently get jobs at Walmart, uh, get jobs at Lowe's, get jobs at some of our essential services that are out there. Um, for veterans, a lot of times it's it's more about getting back to work and having that mission. So uh, less about the money and more about being able to, to contribute and feel like they're moving forward in life. And so uh, something to keep in mind for all of our veterans and family members out there is is when this thing gets clear or during this time when you've been furloughed or laid off and you're wanting to figure out what your next steps are going to be, uh, definitely reach out and give us a call because our, our Department of Labor program, our case managers that we have in 49 counties across the state uh, are willing to step in to assist you, to help you, to work with you, you back on track. Uh, maybe it's a an opportunity to go from a job that you really didn't like to a career that you love. And so take this time to really uh, self-assess and and work with our case managers and maybe get you into a different line of work during this time or be preparing you for to get you in a better line of work during this time uh, for our veterans who have been homeless that are looking for employment that program is still up and operational as well we've had some barriers with training uh, obviously a lot of the classes that have been going on that's in-person classes have been canceled or postponed until this happens but we are working with some community college and other training avenues such as webinars, virtual uh, trainings, uh, the community has gotten really, really creative in how we can continue to better this population and train them to get them back into the workforce. Yeah, uh, it seems like the situation is kind of like a, a balloon when you squeeze it. On the one hand, Asheville's economy is very uh, tourism and service based, mm -hmm. uh, but there are other uh, other entity or other job situations available. And it would seem to me that this crisis situation opens up jobs that uh, people can can do and move maybe into something that even, as you say, like more than what they have been doing in the past. So it can be an opportunity uh, for a whole new uh, a whole new way of making your living. That's right. And we're seeing like with, uh, for instance, our truck driving schools actually are still operational. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, getting your CDL, there's a huge, huge need for right. truck drivers during this time. I mean, there's right. a big gap in that. Uh, and as, as you probably know, and Jessica definitely knows, truck drivers, when they start off making and start off driving, they're making 
fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year for a company, which is a very good livable wage for Western North Carolina and across North Carolina. So our truck driving schools and our CDL uh, trainings are still operational. Um, there, I guess you can only have so many people inside of a truck at one time. So social distancing is a uh, is, is it's a given. To, it's a an given absolute given. Um, so that is just a, a line of work that is really in a need. And this is a great opportunity for a lot of our vendors to get that kind of training, mm -hmm. particularly during this time. Right. Right. Yeah. And and my guess would be big companies would have, you know, uh, in the in the army, my husband, my my husband was an airline pilot and they would have those uh, training uh, rooms that you go into. So my, I'm guessing that they probably have a kind of virtual training for truck driving too, if it's yeah. a big enough company. Yeah, there's a lot so of hybrid that, activities going on. Yeah, um, I would like I would like for Jessica to talk because our our food uh, request through the coordination center significantly went up. We were living around four or five percent, and we're seeing it now as high as twenty seven percent mm -hmm. of the request coming in. It is for food. And yes. so I'd love for Jessica just to elaborate a little bit on some of the community partners that are, we're working with to deliver food. Uh, a lot of the community partners that we have that are boxing the food and getting the food out to these families. So Jessica, if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are definitely seeing an increase in the call center for food requests, um, all types of food requests, hot meals, uh, pantry items, staple items to take home, even just delivery of food for some of um some of our clients that we see. Uh, Community Kitchen has been a huge resource that for us out in Haywood County. We set up a table out there to help meet some of those veterans needs, um, but they're serving a hot meal. Uh, 211 and United Way of Asheville, they have a set up with Salvation Army where they're serving hot meals um, for dinner time. Uh, we are above our ABCCM crisis downtown in Cumberland Avenue. Um, they're doing a hot meal and they're also doing pantry uh, items and we can help with those deliveries and packing those for veterans as well. Um, a big shout out to Mana Food Bank during this time. They're setting up a lot of those scheduling of drop off and pickups and the, all the distribution of the food. Um, so if anyone needs any assistance, we've got a great connection with them. We can get food, um, hot meal type food or pantry food. Um, but yeah, it's been an increase that we see and we think it, it comes right along with that income piece. Um, Buncombe County Health Department is doing a lot of good things to help with the food stamps and the WIC increases. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's if there's a gap in that for, you know, a few days or so and you just need a little bit to get you through, um, it's definitely something that we're seeing in the call center for sure. So how do people get in touch with you all to uh, take advantage of the opportunities that are here and the support that's here with uh, both Veteran Services of the Carolinas and uh nc serves yeah so we and kind of and a -A yeah so we definitely we've centralized uh the services to an 855 number um anyone can reach out to 855-962-8387 um, or they can find us on our website abccm-vsc.org um, there's no wrong door you give us a call um, reach out to us through the web form um, and we'll give you a call back or email if that's easier for you um, and we'll help you get connected to those resources mm -hmm. and maybe even some additional things that you weren't aware of as well. So, Brandon, uh, what's your take on what's happening now uh, as far as support for uh, veterans and their dependents and uh, the um, general situation that uh, probably no one expected to happen. Yeah, I think that we always have got to look at the silver lining and the mm -hmm. positivity that's happening right now. I know uh, a lot of us are sometimes aggravated because we can't go out to eat uh, with our loved ones or uh, are missing some of the ball games that we want to watch on TV or going to the Asheville Tourist Baseball game during this time of year. Uh, but let's look at the bright side of everything. And a lot of what's going on in the communities is it's bringing people closer together. Uh, it's bringing families closer together. Definitely has uh, created a twist with my family. My wife um, and two girls that are at home, as soon as I get home, my wife says I'm leaving. I'm going for a run. Uh, I got to get away from the kids for a couple of hours. Um, but I think it's a good thing, though. I think that uh, the Lord blesses us in many, many ways. And I think this is a way to bring people together 
uh, not just families in a home, but also the community. It's created a, an environment where we've had to become a little bit more creative with the way that we are servicing the, the public, servicing each other. Uh, calls like this one where now we're on a Zoom call or a, a Skype call or uh, we're, we're becoming a little bit more uh, connected in a way that we never thought we would be. I right. think we, we have more meetings and we are communicating more now than possibly we were before this happened. Uh, it's easier to hop on a call like this than it is to travel across the town uh, to meet with somebody. So silver lining, you've got to look at what's what's the, the greatness out of what's going to come out of all this. Uh, and obviously the creativity and bringing people together, even though we're isolating right now, is something that I think we all need to to, to be aware of and be thankful for. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we do moving forward from this, um, hopefully the energy and the positivity that we're seeing in a lot of areas will will continue to go on. It's much like any major disaster or major thing that happens in our in our country. And when you look back at 9-11, you know, when 9-11 when happened and the following months after that, uh, veterans had less PTSD symptoms. There was a sense of uh, a more tribal togetherness during a time of, of chaos and a time of uncertainty, it brings those people together in a way that we wouldn't. And so I hope that with this pandemic, as we unwind, we don't forget that. And we continue the positivity and the relationships that we've created going through this. And I think that's, for me, that's the way that, that I'm trying to frame it. And I'm trying to look at it, even though I can't eat at my favorite sushi place right now. Um, I think we've got to look at what the best that's going to come out of all of us is uh, not only as a human race, but just as North Carolinians as a whole. And Jessica, yeah. what about you? So yeah, just to kind of add on that, I mean, it's so nice to see, you know, I get tons of emails and emails kind of became a real commutative way that we, we get through to each other, but almost every single one of them has something, hope you're staying safe, hope you're doing well, you know, hope you're healthy. And it's just something to kind of remind you that everyone is checking in on everyone and that as a community, we're doing our due diligence to make sure that we stay informed about what's happening with COVID-19 and we stay informed with what's happening with all the decision making and changes. Um, so over communication is definitely something that's happened and maybe something that needs to continue once we come out of this. Um, we definitely feel that kind of tribe and culture um, in the office as well. You know, we we're checking on each other a lot. We're checking on mental health. Um, mental health has been a big one that I think has really stepped up. We've had a few more mental health requests than we normally have, but we've all been able to fill those with Zoom meetings and phone calls. And I think the providers are doing a good job really reaching out those extra few times because they know the face-to-face -face isn't happening. And we've all had to adjust and do things a little different and it can be exhausting and it can be tiring and it's just a change of pace, definitely. But I think we're gonna come through it stronger than we were and I hope that we learn from it, definitely. Well, I think it's interesting that all of the ways that we're able to to use online communication now. And uh, Brandon mentioned it's so much more convenient to just go from your office work to turning on your computer and your mic and, and, and your camera and having a meeting instead of traveling across town or traveling halfway across the country for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one of the very positive things that have come out of it and the sense of being in the trenches with everyone. Um, mm -hmm. So that's uh, a unifying thing. So uh, we've got about uh, five more minutes. Uh, let's go into, again, uh, services that are available for veterans. Brandon, I know uh, Brandon has worked very hard to get services uh, to our veterans and uh, tell us about some of the programs that you've helped put together and uh, is are available now for uh, veterans, even without the pandemic situation that's going on. Yeah, so uh, Veterans Service of the Carolinas, although we have uh, three major programs that we have direct services to, our coordination center uh, assist and supports uh, across 21 human service needs. So whether that be child care, social enrichment, mental health, legal, housing, uh, you name it, the human service need that anyone can have can reach out to our coordination center uh, and get them to start helping them and advocating for them for services uh, in the community. Um, 
the biggest thing I want to really relay right now is housing is a huge, huge issue that we're seeing that's going to have a waterfall effect. Uh, a lot of our veterans that have been furloughed, laid off, that may have been experienced that before this are now looking at four, five, six months that they're behind in rent. Uh, with the current shutdown and the courts being shut down, nobody's getting evicted uh, through the legal process way. So when the courts open June 1st, uh, as we hope they do, uh, we might see a very big uptick in evictions because these landlords, they're going to need to get paid. I mean, they've got a business to run too, and they're they're going to bind to to pay their bills. So, uh, housing's a big one. So, I just want to really uh, stress the fact that if you are a veteran or a family member of a veteran that is uh, struggling with uh, their rent right now, that is uh, worried about paying their rent when this thing comes to a close, reach out to us at Veteran Services of the Carolinas because. Like I said, we have additional funds. We have quite a bit of funds right now that we can spend between now and September uh, to really assist and support you uh, getting you through those times. Uh, and additionally, if you've if you've been furloughed or you've lost your job during this time, uh, it runs parallel and in support of our, our Department of Labor and our employment program. So not only can we assist you and support you with your rent and keeping you stably housed for you and your family, but we can also work with the employment side of things to get you self-sustaining uh, over the next nine months, getting out of this pandemic and get you back to work and, and back to being self-sustainable. Those, those are the two biggest things that I want to really just mm -hmm. uh, push out to the community is between housing and employment, uh, those are two of the major functions that we at VSC has to offer as far as direct service programming. And both those grants uh, have give us additional funding to support more individuals uh, and in different methods and different ways than we historically have done. Just want to talk you about, um, yeah, so we have two, um, two community events coming up. I just wanted to kind of put out there. So on May 7th, NC Strive is holding a virtual conference. Um, NC Strive is for facility educators and staff of, of any type of education, university, community college, um, all kinds of education, where we kind of come together and talk about veterans and their needs as students and working through the education system. Um, we normally hold conferences all across the state. Those have kind of been put on hold. They're going to do a virtual meeting. Um, it's through the North Carolina Governor's Working Group. You can search that online. It'll live stream on their page on May 7th. Um, starts around 11 a.m. Uh, we also have on May 25th, there'll be a memorial service. Normally we go to Black Mountain um, Cemetery and do a service out there. That's going to be virtual this year. So on uh, May 25th at 11, they'll also stream that um, through the city website. Um, and it's put on by the, the Asheville City and the um, Asheville uh, Mayor's Council, meeting, Veterans Council. Um, so those are two events to look forward to, to, to stream online. So go ahead and give um, contact information again. And I do want to say at the end of this video, we'll have uh, the numbers up on the screen for people to uh, contact you all too. Yeah. Awesome. So you can reach uh, Veteran Services of the Carolinas and NC Serves Western at the phone number 855 to 8387, um, or you can find us on the web at abccm-vsc.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page, Veteran Services of the Carolinas, post a lot of great content there to stay connected. Um, so no wrong door to find us, definitely. Yeah, and I'm assuming that there's some social media pages too available um, and under Veteran Services of the Carolinas. The, yeah, there's a Facebook page, Veteran Services of the Carolinas, and then we also have an Instagram um, and a LinkedIn that's new. Okay. So, Brandon, um, thank you very much for joining in on uh, this interview. I see you're in your office. It looks like a home office, or it might be a, a, a Veteran Services of the Carolina office. I'm in my home, and Jessica looks like she's in her home, and thank goodness we can meet like this and get the word out to people. So uh, do you have any final words? No, I think we're good, Ms. Davine. We thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we love WPVM and 103.7. You guys have been so great to us and allowing us to host NC Serves Radio. 
uh, really supportive of this community radio show that you that you have in the station. So grateful for the opportunity. We look to help and, uh, and support you and support the community moving forward. So thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you both for what you do. It's very important. And we recognize that.